On today's Chords and Coffee, we are talking about the minor four. What is the minor four? It's probably one of the most nostalgic, heart tug kind of chord progression sounds that's out there. You love it, I love it, we all love it, and I'll prove that to you here in just a second. But what I'm talking about is you have a one chord, you have the four chord, then the minor four, and then back to the one, okay? And yeah, there's a lot of different ways to do that, but for the most part, that's the genetics of this tonality that we just love so much. In this episode of Chords and Coffee, I'm gonna talk about why we love that. I'm gonna talk about the music theory behind it and give you some tools, some chord resources, some grips to put in your hands so that you will not only never fear a minor four chord progression if you ever had in the first place, but you'll also be really confident. More importantly, you have some really cool creative expression that you can have as just a unique part of your playing, okay? And then I'm gonna give you a ton of chords. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. So the minor four, Nate, give me some examples. I, I don't know what you're talking about readily. Well, yes, you do. Um, so like the Beatles use this all the time. That's that D to D minor to A or Sleepwalk. sound bite that would be. Um, it's minor fours and space oddity. Um, well, Nate, I listen to country music. We don't have any minor fours in country music. That's the way love goes, babe. If Merle Haggard ain't country music, what does the world come to? Is that where we're at? No, Merle Haggard is country music. Come on now, that's the way love goes, Merle Haggard. What else? There's a bunch of stuff. There's just a bunch of stuff. And it's not precluded to pop music. Very prevalent in pop music, meaning all music, not jazz or classical. So it's worth getting in your hands. It's worth having an understanding about why do we love it so much? Well, I'm gonna tell you. So let's take the key of E. E is the one, real quick, just so you make sure we're all talking about the same thing. Index finger on the G string of the first fret. Middle finger is gonna be on the second fret of the A. Ring finger is gonna be on the second fret of the D. Play them all, E. And then for our A, in this example, we're gonna use the one finger A. It's gonna be on the second fret of the D, the G, and the B. Open A string, not playing the high E, not playing the low E. And then to A minor, index finger on the first fret of the B. Middle finger is gonna be on the second fret of the D. And then G string, second fret with the ring finger. The reason we like it so much is that we love the satisfaction, we love the completion, we love the resolution of the movement of those notes into the one. So you, on the four chord, you've got an A, a C sharp, and an E. And that C sharp right there is moving to that C natural on the minor four, that A minor, and then moving to a B, which is the fifth of E. So you have. I mean, that sounds like we landed the plane. Everybody okay? Everybody okay? Yeah, you are, because it's one, right? We love that resolution. Another is you've got that A that's in the A chord. You've got that A that's in the A minor. And then you've got that G sharp. So it's almost like, think of it, it's almost like an E sus. You know, amens, but it's just an amen, right? So you've got these two resolutions that are moving into a point of rest. That's why we love it. And we also love it because I think 
you know, music has sort of hidden in all these little nuggets on how to navigate life. Nuggets to navigate life are important to have in your collection. You need some things to hurl at Goliath when he shows up, right? So, um, a lot of times we like that, I'm happy, I'm kind of sad, and I'm happy. It's that bittersweet thing. We love it, right? Well, when we're talking about a minor four, I would like to suggest to you, I want you to think about not just the minor four or even a minor seven. I want you to think about a minor six. And I'll tell you why, but let me give you an example, not in the key of E, just to have it. Here's a G. Right? Let's do this, this, uh, this, this is kind of one of my favorite variations of, of cowboy G here. I skip the A, and the way that I do that is that my middle finger hits the third fret of the low E, and then the angle that it's going across the neck, I end up just kind of dampening the A. But I've got an open D, an open G, and then I've got my ring finger and pinky are both on the third fret. Ring finger's on the third fret of the B, pinky's on the third fret of the high E. Then I'm gonna go to the C over G. And that's gonna look like index fingers on the first fret of the B. Open G, middle finger is gonna be on the second fret of the D, and then ring finger is gonna be on the third fret of the low E. And then if I want my pinky to stay on that um, third fret of that high E, that's great. that well that's a C minor 6 over G and in this situation you've got your index finger barring on the D the G and the B of the first fret just those three and then your middle finger is going to hit the second fret of the G that minor 6 why do we love that because we love hearing that 6 of that minor chord get resolved to the 1 of the major. Well, let's go back to E. Right? To make an A minor six, you just put your pinky on the high E, make an A minor chord, then put your pinky on the high E, second fret. Now, that could go like that, or that could go. Even more resolute, even more nostalgia. Ah, big brother came home after the war, and he had grandpa's pocket knife that he thought he lost, and it was hidden with a map. Anyway, but you get it. It feels really good, right? So, let's look at a ton of chords, and let's start with why does this, from a music theory standpoint, from the mechanics standpoint, I got to satisfy all my high certainty need folks out there. I love you, and I'm glad you're here. Um, I need you in my life. Um, why does this work? Well, I'm gonna tell you why. We are borrowing that A minor from the key of G, okay? A minor doesn't naturally, or it, it isn't native to E. It's a minor four, it's a, it's a four chord, had something happen to it. Well, think of it this way, and this is the way I approach it. We're actually taking that from the key of G. Why is that significant? Remember a while back we had a tension and release lesson. That lesson has a big deal for me anyway because the foundation of much of what we discuss in terms of how chords work together and why you can substitute, like we are in this situation, one chord to the next, is built on this premise of in every major key, you know, there's a major scale that has seven tones. There's a chord that corresponds with each one of those that's built from all the chords that are in that key. And then when you take all seven of those chords, this is all in that tension and release lesson. If you take all seven of those chords, you can group them into two groups, your release chords, which is your one, your three, and your six, and then your tension chords, which is your two, your four, your five, and your seven, okay? So what happens is, is A minor coming from G, A minor, C, D, and then F sharp diminished, we can use all of those chords as a substitution for the minor four. And that's true of every key. We're just working with E right now, so stay with me. So we're gonna relate all this to E, but once it's all said and done, you'll have the, the math, if you will, or the formula for to do this in any key, okay? Okay, before we jump into that, I wanna just focus on the F sharp minor seven flat five. That's a big coordinate, too much to you. You're losing me, brother, stay with me. 
This is easy and you can do this. We just did that A minor six, right? The reason we went there is because for this F sharp minor seven flat five, all that is is an A minor chord with an F sharp in the bass. So really it's not much different than A minor six. It's just the location of the F sharp. Somebody say hallelujah, cause that's easy. All you're gonna do is do your middle finger on the second fret of the low E, skip the A, but doesn't this chord have an A in it? Yeah, but we don't need all them A's, come on now. So skip the A, and then you're gonna put your middle finger on the second fret of the D, pinky on the second fret of the G, index finger on the first fret of the B. So that's an F sharp minor seven flat five. We've talked about that voicing before, in fact, Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you several different ways to do an E to an F sharp minor seven. So. I like that little push there because it makes it feel a little more gospel-y. And then this next one. What is that? Well, I've got my index finger here on the fourth fret of the G, the B, and the high E. If it feels more comfortable to put your index finger on the D, and then hold, you know, sort of bar the rest of those, getting it you know, more in the middle of the neck, that's fine too. But you're gonna actually cover up that D string with your ring finger on the sixth fret of the D string. And then your pinky is gonna be on the A string of the seventh fret. So E major seven, play the low E. Remember this voicing? I know we've talked about that. I think it was an attention and release lesson. It may have been in a couple others. But essentially, this is, again, just like this. This is an A minor over F sharp. In this case, we're making the A minor with our index finger on the fifth fret of the high E, the B, and the G. And then our middle finger is gonna be on the seventh fret of the D. And then your pinky is gonna be on the ninth fret of the A. Now, if that feels scrunchy, you're like, that is impossible. Again, it's your thumb's fault. Move your thumb around, you can do it, okay? If you wanna do that like this, leave your pinky free for activities you can but I like doing it this way okay so and this next one did you see the um, the demo that me and Nash did for the Gibson Falcon I played this kind of deep cut Stevie Wonder song that had this which is essentially all that is, is this E major seven with a little chromaticism up to this F sharp minor seven flat five. Just keep an E in the bass. Well, how do we do this? Well, in this case, since we're in the key of E and we've got these two glorious E strings ringing open, ready to jump in and help, we don't have to bar all the way across. You can just actually just put your index finger on the A string of the seventh fret. And then you can take your ring finger, put it on the ninth fret of the D, your middle finger on the eighth fret, of the G and then your pinky on the ninth fret of the B and then hit all of them E's, right? And then this F sharp minor seven flat five, which we've talked about a ton, but here it comes one more time. Index finger on the ninth fret of the A, ring finger on the 10th fret of the D, middle finger is gonna be on the ninth fret of the G, pinky is gonna be on the 10th fret of the B. So all of it. You might be hearing that going, hey man, that kind of kind of sounds like a thing, man. Well, what would I play on top of that? Try playing um, E major pentatonic, so C sharp minor pentatonic, right? Ninth fret. And then when it goes to that minor, you know, I, I, it'd be really cool if you could work out playing some, like an A minor arpeggio over that, but you could also, you know, you could play, just play E minor pentatonic. have problems with the G note when you do that but if you bend the string that'll work too in a perfect world if you switched back and forth between the um, E major and the A minor pentatonic or the C sharp minor and the A minor pentatonic that's gonna sound great that was a weird there it was okay um, <laughs> you, it'll sound great doing that um, one of the beautiful things about electric guitar especially is that you can bend the note and make it right if it doesn't 
start out right. So that'd be a fun thing. It'd be a fun little exercise to record yourself doing that or grab a guitar playing buddy or a keyboard playing buddy and have them do that while you play that on top. Speaking of exercises. So just a second ago, I alluded to um, the tension chords in the key of G. A minor, C, D, and then F sharp diminished, but we're gonna make them a little bit more than just that. We're gonna do an A minor six, and I'll probably have a graphic of this, but in the meantime, here is a piece of paper where I spilled a little bit of coffee that's not blood, but it could be, because I'm working hard for y'all over here, okay? I'm working real hard, all right? So, A minor six, we're gonna do that. You know, um, I wanna do that just as an A minor chord and adding the F sharp on it. And the C6, I wanna do that as a C chord. Now normally on a C6, you've got a G and you just add the A on it. But what I wanna do is not play that G because that G in the key of E is gonna be a minor third on E and that's gonna be a little yuck. And so I'm really treating that as A minor over C. But I called it C6, but it's essentially the same thing. Comment below if that doesn't follow or shoot me an email, natewhite at palinmusic.com and I'll work it out for you. D9, we're gonna play D9. It's basically a D dominant seven chord, D, F sharp, A, C with an E, so D9. And then we're gonna play the F sharp minor seven flat five. Nate, that's a lot of chords, that's a lot of theory. I'm, I'm just a feather fall away from tuning off. Well, don't do that, you're gonna miss out because this exercise, and this is an exercise. I'm giving you an exercise. This one is going to widen our ears out so that we can listen to all those chords that I just laid out for you and we can learn to accept them for a minor four substitution. Meaning that I can use this C6, I'm about to give you this F sharp minor seven flat five as D9 instead of an A minor. When in, in the world am I ever gonna use that? What about Layla? flat nine right there, that is a substitution for an F minor. We love it. It sounds awesome. It sounds haunting, nostalgic, mysterious. So here, let's get these chords in our hands. That's worth it, right? So let's start off with this little exercise. I'm going to play an E, and then I'm going to play each one of these chords just to get my ear acclimated. So E, it's F sharp minus seven flat five. We've been over this. There's the charts. You see them. Let's keep going. Now E, it's A minor six. We just did that a second ago. And then now E to this C6, which is, think of this as an A minor index finger on the first fret of the B, ring finger on the second fret of the G, middle finger on the second fret of the D, now pinky on the fourth fret of the A. And then back to E and into this D9. And you're gonna have your uh, middle finger is gonna be on the uh, A string fifth fret. Index finger, fourth fret of the D, and then ring finger is on the fifth fret of the G, pinky's on the fifth fret of the B. And what's really cool about that, if you wanted to in the bass, you could actually go straight up the major scale. It would change the chords a little bit, but it would work. You can also play an E major on top of all this, and there'll be these moments of tension, but if you stay with it and push through it, and your phrasing and your rhythm is good, it'll sound fantastic. But here's what it sounds like all together. By the way, I did that E over G sharp just then. I don't have that charted out for you, but that's just an index finger on the, uh, let's see, a G string, first fret, middle finger, second fret of the D, and then pinky up here on the fourth fret of the low E. So, it's A minor six. As an exercise, put that in a loop or put that in your garage band, grab your guitar playing buddy and teach them these chords. The best way I learn is usually like as soon as I learn something, I teach it to somebody else. You can do that too. And then play on top of that. That'll actually start to sound like something, right? You might even write a song with that. I was thinking about you the other day. I think about you guys a lot and how I can encourage you. And the truth is, is that in my own life, what has really been a benefit to me as far as learning chords and learning this stuff is just appreciating the chord changes for what 
it is. And maybe even sometimes moving around in different keys and thinking about, well, how would I do that in the key of G, right? You can always email me. You can always you know, put a comment in the comment section and we'll talk about it. But that's part of me teaching myself is figuring that stuff out too. And so I just wanted to encourage you with that. That little exercise will help you. All right, I got one more. I got one more. Stay with me. If you're still here, God bless you. This is a lot of chords, but this is good. This will really help you. This is another exercise. This time, instead of just having different substitutions for the four, I'm going to do some substitutions on the one. So if the two, the four, the five, and the seven can all be used, you know, for one another, the one, the three, and the six is the same, right? That goes back to that tension and release. So what is the one, the three, and the six of the key of E? Not everybody all at once, one at a time. That's right. <laughs> it's an E. It's a G sharp, G sharp minor. And then a C sharp minor. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this E chord. I'm going to do an E add nine. Oh, it's so stretchy. Move your thumb. If you're trying to do it this way, you're trying to butter your toast with a tree branch. You can do it, but it hurts. All right. Move your thumb. All right. Put your index finger on the G string of the first fret. Put your pinky on the fourth fret of the D. Put your middle finger on the second fret of the A. Play them on. E add nine. Why did I do that one? Because I wanted that F sharp when I go to this. And we are, we've already played that. That's an F sharp minor seven flat five. Now check this G sharp minor 11 out. Middle finger second or fourth fret of the low E. Skipping the A. Ring finger on the fourth fret of the D. Pinky on the fourth fret of the G. Index finger on the second fret of the B. And then we're going to go to this A minor six. And a couple schools of thought on this. I'm going to do it this way. You could do it this way, too. Um, index finger on the fifth fret from uh, low E to high E. And then um, all the way across, human capo. La! And then ring finger on the seventh fret of the A. And then pinky, to get that F sharp, is going to be on the seventh fret of the B. So, so far... Now, after this, this is where, to me, really gets gospel -y. If somebody said, what is, like, all of a sudden, what is the moment where things sound like you're going to church? It's when you take the, the one and put it over the five. When you do that, when all of a sudden, in the bass where that, that five comes up, it just feels like we're going to get right. We've been walking a prodigal path, but no longer. Minor four. I'm here to look at you now. Nah. Okay, I'm done. All right, so you're going to have your index finger on the seventh fret straight across. But the truth is, is I'm really only concerned with the low E and the A string. And then your ring finger or your pinky. If your hand's getting tired, have pinky pull up. All right, ring finger is what I'm using, though. And I'm going to be on the ninth fret of the D, the G, and the B. Okay, and then from here, I'm going to this C6. Index finger is going to be on the eighth fret of the low E, skipping the A. And then I'm going to have the ring finger on the 10th fret of the D, middle finger, ninth fret of the G, pinky on the 10th fret of the B. So far, we got this. You got um, C sharp minor seven, index finger straight across the ninth fret from the low E to the high E. Uh, yeah, ring finger is going to be on the eleventh fret of the A, and then pinky is going to be on the twelfth fret of the B. On acoustic guitar, this is kind of scrunchy territory. I don't care who you are, this begins to feel uncomfortable. We're not going to be there for very long. Such is life. Okay, so then from this point, this little motion here is what we're after. And so what's happening is, on this D chord, we're basically, if you remember, again, back to the tension release lesson and also the dominant seven lesson, we really got into the weeds on this. But this F sharp minor seven, right, flat five, is really what we're 
playing just over D. And so here's how we're making this chord. We're gonna go um, middle finger on the 10th fret of the D, ring finger on the 10th fret of the B, index finger is gonna be on the 10th fret of the low E, and then pinky is gonna be on the 11th fret of the G. So all of it. So that is a bunch of ways to look at a 1-4 minor 4, but also more importantly, now, when you're writing, when you're playing, now, I don't know if that's going to come up, trust me friend, minor 4 is going to come up. Now you've got all these different ways to approach it, and hopefully, truly, my hope is, is that as you're watching Chords and Coffee, you get encouraged to be creative. You are creative. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. All of us have some kind of capacity within us to create, whether that's with a hammer, a welding torch, driving a race car, I don't know, a chainsaw. The longer I go, the weirder it gets. But all of us have the capability of being creative. We just so happen to have a guitar in our hand. In fact, we're living life best we can with one of these in our hand. And we're drinking coffee every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Central Time. I sure do appreciate it. Y'all encourage me, you know that? Thank you for watching this. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for all your comments. Please share this. Please ask questions. Your questions, not only do they encourage me that folks actually care about this, but also these are the beans that get brewed in future episodes of Chords and Coffee. So your questions are important. Don't be afraid to ask them. Hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next week for another Chords and Coffee.